Sometimes you'll be required to organize your data in a specific manner. This chapter will cover the difference between sorting, ordering, and ranking, along with filtering and grouping your data sets. Three functions you may use to organize your data are sort, order, and rank. We'll go through a few examples and how, how to use each one of them. Let's start by creating a vector to work with. We'll call this vector completed tasks. Let's print that out. So we just have a numeric vector and it's got five observations. Now let's try sorting our data with the sort function. So this will return our original data set, except sorted in ascending order. So instead of five, nine, three, two, seven, now we have three, five, two, three, five, seven, nine. Alternatively, we can set the decreasing parameter to true to sort the data in descending order. That just looks like this. So now we have 97532. The order function, however, will return the index of each item in your order, in your vector in sorted order. This function also has a decreasing parameter, which can be set to true. Okay, so let's try that out. So we'll use the order function on completed tasks, which is still this. Now we get some new numbers, and that's four, three, one, five, two. And all that's saying is that the first value is, or the lowest value is the fourth observation in our vector. So one, two, three, four is two. And then the second lowest value is the third observation in our vector, which is five, nine, three, and so on. And we could do decreasing and we get the same thing. Let's try that out. And we get the same thing just in reverse order. Finally, the rank function will return the rank of each item in our vector in ascending order. So let's try that. Okay, so that goes and says that our first observation is ranked the third, so it's the third lowest. Our next observation is ranked fifth, so it's the fifth lowest, basically the highest observation, and so on. So you may have noticed in previous chapters that we've used comparison operators to filter our data. So let's just review that by filtering out completed tasks greater than or equal to seven. So let's get rid of some of this first. We'll keep completed tasks. Let's run that, print it out, make sure it's still good. And then let's start by filtering. So we're saying take completed tasks and then we're gonna filter with the square brackets and say only give us observations where completed tasks is less than seven. So we get the same vector, except it chopped off two values, seven and nine. Alternatively, we can use the filter function from the dplyr library. So let's use this function with the iris data set to filter out any species other than virginica. I'm probably not saying that right. So this isn't showing up here, but let's say df is equal to iris and just look through that that data set really fast if we scroll down we see we have all these observations down at the bottom that are virginica okay so let's load in dplyr and then we will say Virginica is equal to the filter function that's in the dplyr library. And then we're going to pass in iris as our data set to filter and say species, which is the column name, is equal to Virginica. So that's how we would do it if we wanted to include only the observations that were equal to Virginica. Let's just try that out. And then let's take a look at that data set. So now everything is equal to that species. 
One final resource for you to leverage as you organize your data is the group by function from the dplyr library. So if we wanted to group the iris data set by species, we could do something like this. So we load the, the library in, and then we say group species is equal to iris, and then we've got our pipe symbol, which, like we mentioned before, can also look like this, and then say group by, and since we're using pipe, we know that it's using the iris data set, and then we pass in the column name and say group by species. Okay, so one interesting thing here is if we print out the resulting data set, you'll notice that the group by operation we just performed doesn't change how the data looks by itself. So let's try that out. As compared to everything looks more or less the same. So in order to change the structure of our data set, we'll need to specify how our groups should be treated by combining the group by function with another dplyr verb, such as summarize. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now we're taking group species one step forward and saying it's equal to itself, except this time we're going to pass it into the summarize function and we're going to specify how we should summarize each column that exists. So we're going to say summarize sepal length by the mean of itself and so on. So let's try that out. Now let's take a look at what group species looks like. Okay, so now we have taken each of the categories so each distinct species, and we've summarized all of its attributes by the average value. So you can find more information about group by and other dplyr verbs at dplyr.tidyverse.org. Uh, but this is kind of like a basic example of how you might do it. And you can swap out this verb by other verbs that exist.